So y'all, so so y'all kids ain't they they ain't letting the kids back in school where you at, huh? Well, they are. I think the first tomorrow to be online, and then after that they could go to school. Oh, okay, okay. All you have to do is stay a minute, just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. All you have to do is stay. Good morning, and what's going on, everybody? Lockout men back in the truck. Yes, sir. Uh, we're doing it live this time. You know, I want to welcome everybody back to another episode of the Lockout Men podcast show. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. And in this episode, man, I have a young man that uh, that been down with me for quite a while. We've been chopping it up and all like that. But he reached out to me. Uh, he reached out to me. He want to come on to share his uh, trucking experience and, you know, so forth and so on. So, without with that said, I want you guys to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. You know what I'm saying? So that you can get you can get when I come on live because I pop on live whenever, whenever, whenever. You know what I'm saying? And when the videos drop, actually today is Wednesday, and you guys know what that means. At five o'clock today, we got the uh, MTC that's coming uh, later today. We also have another interview that's coming later today. So yeah, a lot of a lot of things is happening today, man. But right now, right now, if you guys would like to support the channel, you can do that by hooking me up with some coffee, man. Give me something to drink. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you can uh, do that with the coffee app. It's the it's in the description below, or you can hit me up with the uh, with the uh, cash app. It doesn't matter. However, you guys want to hook me up with some coffee this morning, cause I am thirsty. You know what I'm saying? It's early morning, and I'm getting it in for you guys, and that's what's up, man. Well, in today's episode, like I said before, I would like to bring to the show my man Walter Shannon. What's going on, Big G? Not much, man. Chilling at home. All right, all right. So, so we we was speaking. Uh, we was speaking, you know, in the green room for a little bit, man. You you at home? You uh, you know, you with your kids and all like that. You are uh, resting. Um, we'll we'll get into you know the reasons you know why you decided to uh stay home for a little bit but let's talk about uh let's talk about covid season man i mean covid really got us messed up out here and as how how is it how is it affecting the kids you know what i'm saying with them not going to school with them going to school what, what's going on with with the kids as far as COVID? i think i think my kids are kind of like frustrated they're not going because they they, they want to be around their friends so I know it's it's affecting them and it's kind of isolating them in the house. So I just try that we're just gonna try to try to do something with them once a week. You know what I'm saying? So they're not they don't feel so isolated. So I mean it's affecting them because they can't be around their friends. They just stuck in the house. So do they? And we in Houston. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, you. Oh. We, we in Houston. We in Houston. So a lot of stuff is not open. So you know. Hold on, right quick. I got I I I got something for my Houston people, man. That's what's up, man. Shout out to my Texas people. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with you. How long, uh, how long you been rocking down in Houston, man? It'll, uh, it'll be it'll be two years in February. Okay, okay. What, what, where are you from initially? Kansas City, Kansas. I'm up. Well, I'm not in Kansas. Well, I'm not in Kansas, but I'm I am in Missouri, so. I do have a load oh, yeah. that's dropping in Kansas City, Missouri. And it's funny that there is two Kansas cities, man. I mean, Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, they're sister states. I know, right? And that's crazy. But the actual, right. the, the actual, it's, it's also funny that the Kansas City Chiefs are in Kansas City, Missouri, and not Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah, they, yeah, they they always make fun about that growing up. You know what I'm saying? Type was a Missouri team, not a Kansas team, but you know, 
I, I just I just say it represents both of us, you know what I'm saying? They sister states, so you know. But some people, you know, say it's a Missouri team and not a Kansas team. So I, I know, right? I know, right? And I'm here. As a matter of fact, I'm here in Kansas City, Kansas, too, I'm waiting on, um, waiting to get uh, waiting to get unloaded or waiting for my unload time to get unloaded. You know what I'm saying? Man, so right. how, how was it? How was how was life like growing up in uh, Kansas City, Kansas, man? Well, my childhood was kind of rough, man. You know, uh, we both of my parents, man. Uh, yeah, my mama, she so dope, and you know, my dad was a crackhead and alcoholic. So you know, growing up, it was rough. Wow. But you know, I, I managed, I managed to to make it to the adulthood with you know with decency, but. The, the hurt from, you know what I'm saying, not feeling loved by your mother or by your father, you know what I'm saying, they kind of sit with you for your, all your life and make you feel like you're not really uh, worthy of anything. So you kind of just kind of flow through life, which is what I basically do doing, just flowing through life and not making decisions as a man and stuff like that. And, you know, all it all come, come down coming on you and hit you, hit you pretty hard. Well, yo, you you said your you you know you said your father you know you know he was uh you know addicted and and your mom was uh you know was the baller of the family, so was it uh, did he kind of like get addicted of the of the product that she was selling or well like they were they was never together like you know what I'm saying I was from what I what I was growing up I was an actor there I wasn't supposed to be here they just you know happened to do it one time, whatever, and then I popped up. So they was never in a relationship, nothing like that. God damn it, man. Please tell me. They they, they, they didn't actually say that to you, right? I mean, she didn't. Well, my, my mama did tell me that. I mean, I love my mama. And I, I, I've grown to understand why she said the things that she said because of where she was at. So, you know, as a kid, you don't understand that. But when you get older, you understand where they were at that particular moment and how they were, so you, you understand that's the message that she felt. So you kind of get over it, you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? So like, uh, you know, my childhood was rough, man, and I just kind of flowed through life and I made it. But and that, that and only reason I made it because of my grandma always paying, praying for me and God. So you know, I kind of I made it this far, but now everything come crumbling down. You know what I'm saying? With the with the truck, everything and. Life in general. We'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll talk we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. We'll we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. But man, I mean, uh, you know, I, I I guess I I guess I can pretty much sympathize with you. I mean, you know, my mom, she was, you know, she was, you know, she was a workaholic. You know, she didn't she didn't you know do the drug game or nothing like that. But she was always a workaholic, you know, she was, you know, she was there, but she wasn't there, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, myself, you know, growing up, you know, I came, you know, got to be a little hustler and all like that. Didn't do the, the again, didn't do the drug game. I always wanted my own money because, you know, every time asking moms for some money, it was like trying to pull a team. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I, I didn't dabble on a little bit of everything, man. You know what I'm saying? Drug game, all, all kind of stuff, man. But, you know, I've had a lot of life lessons. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the problem that I got in is I I care about everybody else and don't care about myself. So I break my back for everybody else and not me. And I've always been like that. But, you know, when you're like that, you, you get hurt easy and you get yeah, hurt a you, lot. So. Yeah, you get, you get taken advantage of uh, a lot in that situation, too. A lot of people, a lot of people take advantage of your of your kindness you know what i'm saying and, and that's something and that's something that you got to protect man you you, you got to protect your energy you know what i'm saying i mean you know along the way you gotta you know you you you'll figure that out along the way you know what i'm saying so right you know you, i mean it's 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 like you said it's it's life lessons man you know, it's life life lessons, and you you know you 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 you'll make it. You'll make it through, bro. You'll make it through, man. So let's uh, let's, I, mean, let's, I ain't got a choice, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I already tried to off myself, and that didn't work, man. So uh, nah, man. We it's rough. yeah, we nah, man. We 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 need you here, man. We we need you here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I I I I've been through some I've been through some some really really tough times myself, you know, especially when uh me and my wife separated, you know, that that was a that was a dark period, 
you know, I started drinking, you know, I'm started hitting that hard, that hard liquor and all like that. I, you know, I was on teetering, I was on teetering to do drugs and all like that. But, but by the grace of God and my son pulling me up out of that funk, you know what I'm saying? We'll, you know, we'll, we'll get it, man. You just need, you, you know, you just need that positivity, put that, put that faith into the almighty. You know what I'm saying? So, right. So yeah, man, we, we here and I'm glad you're here. I'm, I'm glad you're here to, to, to share your story with me, man. Um, so let's uh let's let's talk about uh let's talk about trucking for a little bit man how did you uh what what made what what was the decision that you made that that got you into trucking and how you got started well because my my cousin through marriage was a truck driver man and i saw the life that um, he was able to provide for his wife and his kids and growing up not having anything and you know what i'm saying so i, I use it i thought if i did that that i would be able to provide for my family, which I was able to do a lot of things with truck driving, but you know, it, it cost me a lot of things too. All right. All right. You know so not, not being here with your key is, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And stuff like that. Did you, did you by chance do your, you know, did you, did you do your research or you, you pretty much, you know, I just, just jumped into jumped it, man. Into it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So how's so so far? Uh, so far, how's how has the journey been uh, so far? I mean, it, I was able to, you know, what I'm saying, move my family around a lot. I was able to buy my kids the things that they wanted and the things that I never had, the things that I dreamed of. So, truck driving provided a, a lot of things for me and my family. So I, I can't say that, but okay. I also it's a blessing that occurs. You know, what I'm saying it's a blessing because you're able to provide for your family but it's a curse because you're not actually there that's what's up that's what's up so has it been smooth for you man what what was some of the struggles along the way that 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 you that you incurred incurred with uh trucking just the loneliness man and putting yourself in, in positions that you shouldn't be in you know what i'm saying and stuff like that and that could cause compromise to your to your family and stuff like that but other than that, I mean, it, like I said, it provided the way for me and my family. How long? How long you been? Uh, how, how long? How long you been a truck driver? Did you? Or let me let me re let me revert this. Have you been? Uh, how how did you go by getting into it? Did getting your license? Did you get it through? I went school to C R England. I went to school. I went to C R England and got my license. But uh, like my second month in there and I had a trainer that was racist that was calling me the N word, you know what I'm saying, and being whole being hostile with me and we was in uh West Virginia, West Chief Virginia and um I guess it's a two lane freeway and you have to stay in the left hand lane or you're gonna hit the mountain. So I was I had got over, so I wouldn't hit the lap and he woke up and said, What the fuck you doing nigga? And then he told me to get back over. Hold up, bro. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. I, I gotta get the buzz. This this dude actually woke up and and said, "What you doing in word?" Yeah, he he said that, and, you know, and I kind of like, you know, what I'm saying, kind of like, well, okay, whatever. And I got over and I hit the mountain, so and I didn't realize it, but dude ended up calling the highway patrol or whatever, and they came and did their thing. So I had to wait five years before I can get back in the truck because of that one incident because he called the police on me and all that and you know got back to Salt Lake they fired me sent me home and I was devastated I gave up on truck driving because I didn't think that I was going to ever get, get back in it because I hadn't had no experience and you know and I was going through school so so wait 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 how, okay so you said five years Walter how long have you had your how long have you had your license all together I, I think I probably had my license over ten years, man. But oh, like, okay. I only probably drove. But I probably only drove maybe three years because of you know what I'm saying, incidents and stuff like that, getting these jobs and losing them, and then had to come back home and try to regroup and stuff like that. Okay, so let's go back to CR England, man. So this, this, did you when you guys when when they when they paired you with with the trainer. Did he show any indication? Well, of course, he's not going to show any indication in the beginning. You know, he's probably going to be, he's going to show that ugly face. But but before that incident and him calling you the N-word, 
Did you get any indication? Like, did you did you get any type of indication that he was he was the way he was? Like, I mean, no. He, he when he when he picked me up, he he seemed cool. He was ready to go. He was a dedicated driver. He had a certain route that he rode, and you know what I'm saying. And he seemed pretty cool. And then, like, it just the whole little flip, the whole script flip, man. And you know, and I was telling people about it, and people were like, you should have you should have beat him down. But you know what I'm saying? I'm worried about my family, you know what I'm saying, at home. I'm trying to do this and do what I got to do, get my, own, get my own truck so I can provide for my family. And it was just, it was crazy. But, I mean, I'm learning, man. You know, you you have to do what God wants you to do. You can't do what you want to do. When you do what you want to do, you have all these issues and all these turmoils and all these hiccups. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm learning that, you know, I got to sit down and, and I got to regroup and I got to figure out what. God want me to do it because as long as you do what you want to do, you're going to keep up with your head. You're going to keep having pitfalls. And yeah. trucking has has brought a lot of good things for me, but it's been a lot of pitfalls, man. It's been a lot of incidents that I've been getting into and truck driving that I shouldn't get into. But because, you know what I'm saying, you just, you have so much on your plate, man. You, you worried about making sure everybody at home is good. You make sure there's money in the, in the bank account, man. And I kind of like lost myself, man. I was so worried about making sure my home was good. I just lost myself, man, and, and I, I, I was lonely out there, man, so I was, you know what I'm saying, doing all kinds of stuff, man, I ain't had no business doing, man, and, and now it, it cost me my marriage, you know what I'm saying, and it's, 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 the truck job has been, like I said, it's been a blessing and a curse. You know, some, you know, some, you know, truck driving, truck driving for, uh, for, for a person that's, that's never did it before, that's one of the, that's one of the things that you really and truly got to sit back and put in in content i mean in context man because you know if you if if you just going to jump into it and come out here yeah it, it 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 can go left real quick but see if you take your time if you take your time and you know talk to some people you know, you got YouTube now. You can go to YouTube, but sometimes, you know, sometimes YouTube is, sometimes YouTube got bullshit people on there too. So it's it's unfortunate right. you got to weave through the fucking waters of YouTube to find, uh, to find good truckers that's talking about the industry and how it actually is out here. You know what I'm saying? Right. Man, so, well, you, got, you, got, you got a lot of that, man. You, you got to weave it out, man, because one person to say this, mm-hmm. the next person to say this, it's crazy. So you got so you so you got into the accident. Uh, you 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 ran up against the mountain. Did 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 the highway patrol cited you for that? Yeah, he gave he gave me the ticket, but he he's like, man, if he took me. Like, I really can't even write you the ticket because I didn't see it. But because dude called, he had to write me the ticket. Wow. So, you know what I'm saying? And he, he, he told me that, you know what I'm saying? And, like, and you know, so my trucking yeah. career started off horrible, man. This is like, man, and you know what I'm saying? You got a, you got a family at home, and they depended on you to pay these bills, man, and, and that had to happen. You you didn't you, you didn't cause no, you, you didn't hit anybody. You, you, you just hit the side of the mountain, right? Yeah, like, yeah, and, and, it, and it tore the trailer up, that's all. Oh, okay, okay. So they had so they had to send somebody out there to come and tow the trailer, or was you guys able to move it? Well, they they brought another trailer and just you know what I'm saying they took the product from one trailer and put it in the other one. Oh, okay, okay. So you get back to the terminal. Uh, safety, of course, brings you in. Uh, did you did you by chance tell them of your experience with the with the trainer? I did. They they didn't care, man. My my um, dispatch knew about it. He was trying to help me get me back to the terminal. I was almost done with phase two. Like I was driving the truck with no problem, man. Like I didn't have no issues. Just had that little hiccup, man. So when I got back to Salt Lake City, they already had my papers ready and everything because he got to talk to me before I did. So I don't know what he told him. So they like they had everything ready for me just to send me home, like when I, like when we got there. Wow! So did after you got your license through CR England. So after they terminated you, did did they still come after you for the for the money of the li- uh for the license? Nah, cause I mean I I mean I I I, I still owe them money for the school as we speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they still coming after. That's what I'm saying for the school. They they. You yeah. still owe them money for the school? 
Yeah. Man, I would have told them motherfuckers to kick rocks. <laughs> I mean, but like, I mean, they ain't, they ain't never got their money, man. You know what I'm saying? But like, you know, man, it's just truck driving, man. It, it, I'm saying it, I, I get it. What they say, it's a lifestyle. It's not a job. It really is. But you don't know that until you've been in there and you have a bunch of pitfalls and you see all kind of stuff, man. You you really see what it is. It it is it is a it is a lifestyle. It is it's a lifestyle that you hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There you go. Damn it. Why you don't want to There we go. It is a li it is a lifestyle, man. It's it's a lifestyle that uh <laughs> that a lot of people just can't just can't get used to, man. You you got to get used to you got to get used to this type of type of job right here, man. Uh, all right, right. So within, so within the ten, you know, within the ten so years that you uh, had your license, uh, what have you? Who have you been? Uh, have you been driving since after uh, CR England? After they let you go, have you been? Have you been driving since? You said something about being hell, being hemmed up for five years. They what they do? Put that on your DAC report in that. Yeah, they put it on my deck report, so would no would nobody hire me because I didn't have no experience. So it, it took about five years, and the only person that would would take me was Western Express. So I went to them and worked there for like two years. All right, all right. Well, you know Western Express, man. I, I must say, West people talk bad about them, man. But you know what I'm saying they they're a second chance company, man. They willing to help anybody. You know what I'm saying? What well, other companies won't like. They they help you. They they take they take people that most people won't take. So, but like a lot of people talk bad about them, man. But you know, but you know, Western Express. You know, I I, I tend to think that Western Express is a is a second chance company, but it's also a bullshit company, though. I mean, as right. far as yeah. far you know, they 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 give you the chance, but they give you the chance at the cost of them doing you know doing garbage shit to you, like. You know, paying you less. You know what I'm saying? Probably start you off at what you not would what's not uh, not comp uh, what they say, not competitive. Compensated. Yeah. Well, yeah no, I mean, not, yeah, they. I mean, they 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 not a, they they not competitive, man. But you know what I'm saying? Like I said, they um they will give you a chance. I mean, but they got their shirts where only way for you to make money, man, is to be a trainer. So it's it's, it's all set up from them to benefit and not for you to benefit. You have to. Do what they want you to do in order to make money. Because if not, you ain't gonna make no money. So, so doing that, so doing that time, man. Uh, you know, a lot of people get into this trucking trucking gig for you know different goals and different uh, you know different different reasons. What what was the uh, was what was the goal at the time that you had set for yourself when when you actually got into Got in the truck and especially See, that, when you that's got, what I, when I you didn't. To... I, I didn't have a goal. Okay. And I, I just jump in, man. Like I never been an oriented person to set goals to sit down and think about anything, man. I just if I feel the urge to do some stuff, man, I just do it, and I don't think about what could, what happened. I just do, and that's not a good thing when you do that, because man, you you really set yourself up for failure. That's what's up, man. So you said uh, you, you, when you got out here, you you had a whole lot of you know loan had a whole lot of loneliness, you know, missing your family, missing your, you know, missing being with uh, with your family. You, you're out here over the road. You driving from shipper to shipper, receiver to receiver, truck stop to truck stop, man. And you know you 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 of course you getting lonely and all like that. How did you how did you actually deal with that? I mean, I, I deal with it about talking to other women, man, and stuff that I should have been doing, man, and, you know, try to try to, to fill the void of, you know what I'm saying, of being hurt as a child and not not directing it to the right person. Okay, okay. Now, yo, yo kids, so are are you, you – you said it messed up your, your marriage or did it mess up your relationship? I mean, it messed up my marriage. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And my kids, like, I know they love me, but they so used to me not being here. So now that I'm here, it's, I just, it feels, it feels weird sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just, like, walk by you sometimes, don't say nothing to you. It's like, you have to say something to them, but I guess they do their mama like that, too. So I'm, I'm learning a lot, you know what I'm saying? But, you know. Okay. How yeah, many, I mean, I just. How many kids you got, bro? I got, I got four. 
two boys, two girls. All right, and they uh, are they all with you now, or are they they with the family? You yeah, they share are custody. They, or? they all they all they all with me right now. We all living in the same house right now. So the lease is up, and then we gonna go. Um, I go our separate way. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so so you 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 work with uh you said you worked past tense with uh western express uh of course you came on the uh on, on your facebook because you know me and you was facebook friends and you you you, you talked about uh an accident that that you got into when you was driving for western express uh can can you take us back to what happened that day well, um, well, I was dr driving for um, Earl Henderson, not Western Express oh. for the accident, but man, okay, 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 it was it was it was raining, man, and you know what I'm saying. And I was, uh, my mind just was everywhere, but where it needs to be, man. You know, when you're driving that truck, your mind got to be on driving that truck. Your mind can't be on your problems at home, how you feel, and that's what happened. My mind was somewhere else and not where it needs to be, man. And it caused a lot of adjustment. And I rode the truck, man, and. I, I wasn't scared. I was mad, more mad than anything, man. And I, I wish that I was dead. And I had put that on Facebook, man. And I got a lot of uh, backlash from my family and people like that, like saying, why, why you why you say that? You know what I'm saying? So it, it's just crazy, man. It's like a lot of times you don't talk to your family at all until something bad happened. And then everybody want to act like they care. But it's like, care about somebody man you, you talk to them before that you know what i'm saying you reach out to them you check on them you know what i'm saying but you know I, it's just been a, a crazy whirlwind man and i rode the truck man but i'm done with trucking man i think i've been i was trying to do something that i wasn't supposed to do and a guy allowed me to do it for a certain amount of time and i i, I time to do something else you know it's it's <laughs> man i want to i want to touch on i want to touch on the family uh dynamic um you know i i i went through the same thing with my with with my family you know a lot of a lot of people you know they they all come together in bad situations like funerals or when something bad happens everybody and their mama come out of the fucking woodwork you know and you know i get like I get like when I was a kid, like when I was like 17, 18, 19, you know, I, I had family members come up to me like, oh, man, lockout. Uh, I remember you when you was a little baby. I remember you when you was this big and look how big you are. Like I'm standing there next to my moms and shit like, who the fuck are you? Who are you? <laughs> you know, right. and, and my mom's standing next to me. Mom's like, oh, well, that's Uncle such and such. Don't you remember him? I'm looking at mom like, no. I'm looking at mom like, I don't know this brother. I don't right, know. Yeah. And, you know, and, and they'll go like, oh, well, yeah, you, you might not remember me, Lockout, because, uh, you know, you was a baby back. Yeah, oh, okay, where where you been all that time, bro? I right. mean, I, I never seen you. You never came over. You never visit. You never... You never visit. You never did none of that shit. Like, who the right. hell are you? Like, so then as right. I get, I mean, as I get older, as I get older, you know, as I get older, and you know, people start falling to the wayside. You know what I'm saying? Then you get people that gets like, oh, okay, well, we what we should have done back in the day. We should have kept in contact. Yada yada yada. This that and the third. And I'm over here like, well. You know, I said my grandfather, you know, he had a whole nother family, like a whole nother group of people, like a like a whole nother culture over there. And I every time me and my sister came around, we never felt the love from our grandfather. Now this, you know, this is the great, you know, I look, you know, I was a kid, I'm watching TV and I see how grandfathers treat their grandkids and all like that, you know, like, you know, like put them on the knee, bounce them on the knee, take them out, love, whatever, whatever. My grandfather ain't do none of that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So when he died, my uncle came into play, like, you know, 
granddad was, you know, he was a good man, yada, yada, yada. I was like, well, maybe he was a good man to a point, you know. He hooked, he helped my mom get the house that we're in now, which is my house. But he, he helped right. us get in there now. But where was he along the way? He got us in the house, but that's it. We ain't never seen him. We, he ain't come over to visit. He ain't came over to say, what's up? We always went over there. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, a, a lot of it, a, I, well, one thing I learned growing up, a lot of it is how people, is how they were raised. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we don't look at it like that. If they raise a certain way, if they raise not to show love, they raise to be hard and stuff like that. I think a lot of our parents was taught like that. They wasn't taught to show love and all that. They was taught to be hard and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If 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 you been doing wrong, don't say nothing. And that's how I think that's how my family is. So, and I've I've grown to know that. You know what I'm saying? But I've always felt like I was never loved by anybody. So I kind of like just went through life, went through life, just hoping and praying nobody hurt me. And that's not a a good way to be. Like I love my dad, I love my mom, but they was raised differently. My mom was sheltered. She wasn't taught what to do, how to be a mother. So she never knew how to be a mother. No, but she did the best that she knew how. And before she died, she, you know what I'm saying, she would call me every day, come over, spend time with the kids, you know what I'm saying, right. and try to apologize for all the stuff that she did right. to me right. growing up. And my dad was just, he was just talking, you know what I'm saying, he was a player, and he was, you know what I'm saying, he never finished elementary school, so he, did, he couldn't read, he couldn't write. So I used to have to read his mail to him and stuff like that, man. And, you know what I'm saying? And I always told myself when I had my kids, I wouldn't be like my dad. But at the same token, I haven't broke that generational curse because I am being like my dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'm here and I'm not. I'm here, but I'm not here. So me chose to do truck driving. I was being a provider, but I wasn't being the father that my kids needed me to be. And I'm, I'm still working on that. But I'm scared to death to talk to my kids. And I don't know why. I just am. So, you know, my relationship with my kids ain't what I wanted to be. I know they love me, but you know, it's just, I got a lot of work. I got a lot of work to do, man. Like, and I got to start somewhere. Well, don't worry, man. It, at least, uh, at least you're back with them now. You're, you're back into their lives. You're, you know, you, you, you know, you got your faith back and all like that. And it's just unfortunate that, you know, trucking kind of the, you know, the last bit, you know, the last tail end of it, you know, kind of like, made you uh made you make a life change and you know and when you get into accidents and you 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 survive accidents like that rollover that you said that you that you was in man uh it, it does change you accidents take accidents do change you uh, if if it doesn't hopefully it change you for the better but it it being in an accident especially a trucking accident it does it does uh it does change you um so right you said it was raining that day and uh you know you said you kind of lost focus so you you kind of lost focus and you kind of like slid off to the side and and rolled over that way um well it, it was like it was like four in the morning man and it's dark on a little small road man and you know what i'm saying it was raining. i just i think the uh, like, you know, I was coming to a stop sign and I didn't see it in time and I hit the brakes. So once I hit on the brakes, the trailer locked up, swung out and the trailer went and then the tractor went. Oh, man. Nah, so, like, you know, like I said, just not paying attention to, you know what I'm saying, the signs and where I'm at. And then at the last second, you see some old and you react. And once you react, it, the reaction wasn't what it needed to be and it was wet and rainy. So there, there it went. Um... Was there any was there anybody that came over to to see that you was all right? I, that, did you I guess know? supposedly a one car rode drove past and didn't say nothing, and then another guy came over and said, "Oh, you're all right." And you know what I'm saying? And then you end up calling the police, and you know, and they got me to a hotel where they go do the drug test, and then next thing you know, they terminated, which I knew that's what they was gonna do. So, but so they you, got me back home. So, so you so so you actually and it was a lease purchase. So you actually purchased it now they. So you, so you actually walked out it, you know, you kind of like, you know, the truck is sitting on the side, so you climbed climbed out of the truck. Climbed out. Yeah, you climbed yeah. out. You, you actually climbed out of the truck. And, right. And I guess the guy that, 
that pulled over. Shout out, shout out to him uh, that pulled over to make sure that that you uh, that you are right. Uh, wow, I, I'm I'm glad you was all right, man. Um, I I, I, I mean I, 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 I am too, man. But at that particular moment, man, like I, I really wish that I was there, man. And I I still feel like that sometimes. So, but that's why my family really don't like talk to me like that. Cause they ain't trying to hear that. But I mean, every day I wake up feeling like that, and I know I can't. You know what I'm saying? I got four kids that that need me. You but got you got people that's dependent it's, it's on you. It's a fight every day. You you got people that's depending on me on you, man. And just look at just look at that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how I do it. You know, I mean, I I, I wake up, you know, I I get my bout. I have my bouts with uh, depression every once in a while. You know what I'm saying? And it's just you know sometimes it just it just hits me like a ton of bricks. But you know, I just look up. I I just look up and just thank God that I am here. And you know, I look towards seeing my son which is you know the light of my light you know i mean light of my light my the light of my life you know what i'm saying he he brings me he keeps me grounded you know what i'm saying i i really think if if he wasn't here i do that too man yeah Yeah, i mean my kids are too man but i i still feel like that man i don't i wish i did like i love my kids that man i want to see them grow up i want to see them be a better person i want them to achieve whatever they want to achieve and like man be, be better than i was man the pressing is real you know what i'm saying man it's, it's crazy like man. so yeah. after so after the situation and you kind of figured you 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 kind of figured now that you know sim semi truck driving just isn't just isn't for you anymore do you still have your class a yeah i still got it oh, okay okay then you could you could still use it for maybe you know maybe small small driving like uh like espadine like right now I work a yard dog i work as a yard dog for home depot right now so okay I mean. okay okay that's what's up that's what's up man that's what's up at least you back you back bro Hold right. on right quick I, I know it's something that you don't want but it's you know at least you're still keeping even you know you say you're working for a yard dog for home depot do you still need your medical card to 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 yeah to, they to want do? they they want all that man but they don't they don't care about the driver record man they just want you to have a medical card and and and, and your dot because that's all they care about man because like i apply one day i went to the interview the same day and i got hired the next day and i told them about the about the accident and they didn't even care so you Wait a minute! You told him about what? Well, you know what? You know what? I, I I wouldn't being that I wouldn't think they would probably look uh, as far as as far as that goes because you you're you know you 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 pretty much driving in the yard, you park in the truck, and then you going home, you know, like that. Right. So, uh, working for Home Depot, man. How 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 how's your experience been there so far? Man, I, I mean, it's a job. I hate it. You know what I'm saying? Because like they don't take care of the equipment or whatever, man. You walk, you ride. You know what I'm saying? You get in these trucks, man, and it's like one thing after another don't work, and they don't really want you to say too much about it, man. Like they just want you to drive that mud. If it's half working, just drive it for 12 hours. Just deal with it, man. That's the only complaint I got. I mean, but you know what I'm saying 12 hours a day. You know what I'm saying? 1850. You know what I'm saying? 200 some dollars a day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not hard work, but you don't get a break. They want you to work 12 straight hours with no break. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes they uh, provide food for you. They provide water. They provide snacks. And then how you come get it in the little office? How you come get it and you get back in your truck and you eat and dry? You know what I mean? So okay. it's a job, man. Okay. Now, being that you're a yard dog, man, I, I know a lot of blind side and a lot of sight sides uh going on in them motherfucking yards man so being a yard dog is it easy uh is it easy for well of course it's easy it's easy for you guys to get uh to maneuver around uh the trailers and all that that moving a, trailers all day right it's a it's a learning experience for me man you know what i'm saying because you know dri- driving a full thing to driving a little yard dog man it's a difference man you like you can 
stretch a little bit and you know you could push a little bit a little bit when you got the yard dog that you couldn't push when you got a full when you got the trailer when you got the full bed because you, you can't you can't maneuver around enough to to do it but with the yard dog man you can you know what I'm saying you can fit in a little tight spaces man you can do a lot of things that you wouldn't know be able to do all right all right that's what's up hey are there are they trucks uh manuals or are they automatics automatic oh so they are automatics uh, the, do they do they have any manuals? I I, I heard some of them are. This manuals. company, this this company don't have any manuals, but I mean there there probably other companies that probably have manuals. Now let me ask you this before we get be, before we uh before we get up out of here, um, you drive drive is is are you driving for a for a different company that's leased onto Home Depot or are you driving? For Home Depot, it's a it's a tip it's a tip ADC called Boone Logistics out of Florida that they hired to do the yard the yard work. So that's how that's how I got the job. Oh, okay. but it's actually working for Home Depot. You know what I'm saying? At their warehouse, you know what I'm saying? Pulling trailers out, moving trailers and stuff like that. Oh, okay, so they do. So there's temp agencies for truckers. Yeah, man. They, I mean, you be you be surprised, man. On Indeed, man, you could, it's a lot of jobs out there on Indeed for, for you know what I'm saying for where for warehouse with truck driving all kinds of stuff, man. It's crazy because I've got so many applications uh -huh. for jobs with truck driving. It's crazy, and a lot of them I know I can't do, but people still send you all kind of yeah. fill out applications, fill this out, fill that out. But I don't do it. So I'm like, man, I got a rollover. Y'all not finna, y'all not finna fade with me. Right. I know better than that. Right. Right. At least you know. Now this is like now this is like your second, what well, I want to say second major accident since CR England, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, but they 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 are spread apart. So you pretty you 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 pretty good, uh, Walter man. You you might could still get back into you know tractor trailer trucking, but. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I had a couple of people that I knew was that could give me a job with somebody, man. But I just decided not to do nice. it. You know, so like right. I said, I mean, I just, yeah, I just felt just... like I, I did truck driving to, to you know, what I'm saying to provide for my family. But I, I probably shouldn't have did that. I probably should have just got a regular job and stayed at home with my family. And you know, what I'm saying, and I think things would be different than than now than now they are now. But I chose to do that because I wanted to to be a provider and I wanted to give them the world, which I knew if I did truck driving. That, able to do that now the guy now, so that's why i chose to do truck driving now since the cr england incident with the with the with the with the trainer calling you out of your name have you ever felt uh have you ever been discriminated against uh anywhere else in 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 your in your trucking career just just with the with the COVID nineteen man you know how you, you you know what i'm saying they act like we got the disease and you can't use the bathroom you can't do this you know what I'm saying? It's, it's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, you try the restaurant's closed. We ain't got nowhere to eat. We ain't got nowhere to use the bathroom. We can't take showers. We can't eat. It's just crazy. Or you go to certain chippers, and man, and it's like they got a bathroom. But they tell you they ain't got a bathroom. It's like, dude, how y'all use a bathroom? I know y'all use a bathroom. Mm -hmm. Just say we can't use it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just be honest. But, you know, when it comes to stuff like that, man, and people not going to be honest, man. Well, you know, it's kind of like it, it, that was. COVID season just COVID. Came, COVID season came in and just tore up everything. I went to uh, McDonald's yesterday and I, I I forgot my mask, so I came in there with right. my, you know with my shirt over my over over my face and uh, you know uh, African American female over here talking about well you need a mask on. I'm like well I I got my it says it says face coverings covering you know what right. i'm saying so i am covering my face you know what i'm saying right. with, with my shirt i am covering but you you i said so you telling me you can't you're not going to serve me because i don't have a mask right I right yes yeah. so i think some people man are taking it way too serious man if you're covering your face and you're protecting it shouldn't matter man but you know some people are just taking it taking it to 20 man it's crazy yeah, man, that's that's yeah, it. Is like I said, COVID season is is, is changed a lot, and it's gonna be, it, it, it's gonna be me even messed up even when they when they find a vaccine, man. I bet you. I I told uh I told a trucker friend of mine that I said I get I said I bet you I guarantee when they find a vaccine they're gonna force us to take it. <laughs>
Watch. Why it's it's gonna come. Right. It's gonna come, man. It's right. It's gonna come. Yeah, yeah. And, and then some companies, man, you gotta go in there to do the paperwork and they scared to death for you. They wanna want you to sign a paper, but they want you to be fifty feet away like you got like you like you got the thing, man. It, it's just cold. It's just been a it's been a mess. Man, it is. It is, man. Well, all right, man. So <laughs> if <laughs> I guess I guess with all this, with all the experience that you, that you, that you experienced, would you would go back? Would you do it all over again if you given the chance to? I mean, I would, but I would sit down and talk to talk, talk about it before I did it. I just wouldn't jump to do it. I would make sure everybody cool with the situation, how it's going to be and then go do it. But instead of just jumping and just hoping that everybody deal with it and, do it and make it work because it didn't work like that all right man so uh first i want to thank you for coming on walter man i really do appreciate it man um is there what's 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 for the future for walter shannon now man i mean are, are you going to you know are you, right right what, what's the future what's, right now i don't really know man like i'm trying to, to figure that out man like, like i said man i've never been a person that sit down and thought about anything thought about thought it out or anything like that so this is a new thing for me trying to be able to sit down and write stuff out and write what Walter wants to do yeah, you understand? I never thought about that I've always worried about everybody else being good and I felt as long as everybody else was good I was good and well, that's, that's that's my whole thought process and that's how I've always been so you know time. and it's when time. you be like that all your life man it's, it's hard to change and, and you know what I'm saying like right now I don't I don't know what I want to do I really don't but the only thing right now is I'm enjoying being around my family mm -hmm. so take that for what it's worth and, and, and go from there man it's time bro it's time man Walter Shannon everybody <laughs> Man, listen, I, I am so thankful that you came on to chop it up with me, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. I am also thank you, thankful that you're here. You are in my prayers, bruh. You know what I'm saying? You definitely in my prayers. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that we, uh, that we're, you know, that we're connected in some kind of way, man, because, you know, like I said, you, you actually reached out to me in, in, in the, in the chat or in the um in the uh, messenger to let me know what happened to you you know so i i appreciate you know i appreciate that uh that you come in and you know talk to me and i i hopefully you know some of the you know advice or some of the you know things that i said you know you, uh, hopefully you took it with you obviously you did because you know you came back so but uh, i do appreciate you coming on man thank you very much bro all right. All right, man. Well, you take it easy. You stay safe out here, man. And uh and uh and yeah, I'll get back with you in a little bit. All right. All right. Later. Walter Shannon, everybody. <laughs> man, uh it's unfortunate uh what happened to my man but he's uh he's definitely here he's ba uh, he's back with us you know what i'm saying you know god you know watched over him and you know it was one of those particular uh reasons you know one of those particular times that god actually took the wheel you know what i'm saying you know, God actually took the wheel and said, yo, you know, it's not time yet. You know what I'm saying? This ain't this ain't the time and this ain't the place for you yet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm thankful. You know, I'm thankful to the almighty the, that that gives this man, you know, a chance to to be a father to his kids, to be uh, to be a better man. You know, to show to show the Almighty that he can be a better man, and that's what the Almighty did, and he uh, turned around and gave this man, uh, gave this man another, another chance. So, believe me, I believe me, coming, you know, believe me, in my own experience, 
the almighty, <laughs> you know, hey, I, I believe in God. You know what I'm saying? This as long as you put your faith in something, you know what I'm saying? And so if you put your faith in something, then, you know, there's, there might be, there might be chances for you. So, all right, guys. Well, that's it. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and this is the Lockout Men podcast. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. If you also like this, uh, if you also like the channel and like to support your boy, hook me up with some coffee, man. The Cash App and the Coffee App is in the description below, man. And if you want to come on and chop it up with me, man, you can hit me up in the Gmail. That's Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Hit me over at the, uh, hit me over over across the way over at Instagram. And if you, uh, and if you find me some kind of way. Hit me up in the messenger over on Facebook. All right, guys. I would like to thank everybody that was here. I'd like to thank the LOM community for coming in. I'd like to thank everybody that chimed in. My man, uh, Chappelle, uh, Chappelle Hannon, Mom Dukes, uh, let's see, D Nitty, and the rest of you guys that came in this morning to uh, watch the interview, the behind-the-scenes interview with uh with my man Walter Shannon. And on that note, I'm about to get on up out of here. You guys take it easy because I got a load to pick up. Yes, I do. I have a load to pick up. Y'all take it easy. Peace. Searching, 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 and searching.